My name is Derek Paley. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering. I have a joint appointment with the Institute for Systems Research. Um, I did my undergraduate degree at Yale in Applied Physics and my PhD degree at Princeton in Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. And I've been here at the university since 2007. Uh, my research generally is in the area of distributed control and estimation. I'm very interested in multi-robot systems and how we can use those systems to uh, study the environment. Uh, one of our application domains that we're looking at is mobile sensor networks and how we can steer individual sensor nodes through the environment to extract the most information that we can. And this has applications in atmospheric science, including hurricane forecasting, um, as well as oceanography with studying uh, climate change in the ocean. Um, so we do a number of different projects in my lab with support from the Office of Naval Research, uh, the U.S. Army, the National Science Foundation. Um, one recent project that we're working on has to do with underwater flow sensing and control, which will ultimately help to improve the navigation of autonomous underwater vehicles. And this is a collaborative research project involving myself, a material scientist, a biologist, um, where we're looking at how we can replicate the lateral line system on fish, which they use for hydrodynamic sensing, in an underwater vehicle. So we're building um, small sensors that we can fit on the outside of an underwater vehicle that it can use to estimate the flow conditions um, around it. And in particular, um, those conditions can give information about, the, about obstacles and other uh, structures in the immediate presence of the vehicle that it can use to navigate. Another project that we're looking at pertains to hurricane forecasting. And this is a collaboration with an atmospheric scientist at the University of Miami. And here we're looking at how we can use unmanned aircraft to collect observations inside a hurricane uh, to improve forecasts, particularly of hurricane intensity. Forecasts of hurricane trajectories have improved greatly in recent years, largely due to computational power and um, the readily available uh, computational abilities of computers. But predictions of hurricane intensity really haven't, have not seen the same levels of improvement, largely because there's a gap in the observations or measurements collected within hurricanes at low altitudes, altitudes that are lower than it's safe to fly a manned aircraft. So we envision, as others do, the use of unmanned aircraft to fill this observation gap. And some of the challenges associated with this project are how to fly a single or group of unmanned vehicles in very strong winds, such as those encountered in the eye wall of a hurricane, and where they should be directed to collect observations, where are the measurements most needed to, um, to reduce the uncertainty in forecasts of hurricane intensity. We also are funded by the U.S. Army through the Maryland uh, Rotorcraft Center uh, to study how we can improve the ability of small unmanned aircraft, particularly small rotorcraft or micro aerial vehicles, to improve their ability to fly in strong winds and gusty wind conditions. And so here we're looking at a combination of flow estimation and um, vehicle control to stabilize individual and groups of vehicles in the presence of strong winds. These are the sorts of winds that you might encounter in, in an urban environment where there are street canyons, uh, or if you were, for example, to try to land an unmanned helicopter on the surface, uh, on the surface of a ship uh, that's underway. The ship dynamics are very unsteady, especially in high sea states, and there's an air wake behind the ship that's difficult for the helicopter to navigate. So these are the kinds of problems that we're looking at. We typically apply tools from nonlinear control, nonlinear estimation uh, in this research. On the other side of my research program, I have a very strong interest in collective behavior in biology. And here we're looking at how aggregations of um, biological systems can exhibit collective behavior through simple interactions with one another. So we're looking at two different uh, organisms for this, for this research. On the one hand, we're looking at schooling um, behavior in fish. And so we're studying how schools of fish respond collectively to external startles or artificial looming stimuli and how they can transfer the information regarding that external threat through the school even using nonverbal means of communication. So this type, this type of communication relies on passive signaling using visual and hydrodynamic sensors. And we're trying to gain a better understanding of how schools of fish can exhibit what appears to be a synchronized response to an external threat 
but in fact is more like a cascade effect or a domino effect where individual fish startle and cause their neighbors to startle in turn. Another species that we're looking at to study for collective learning about collective behavior is uh, swarming behavior in mosquitoes. So this is a collaboration with the National Institute of Allergies and Infectious Diseases, one of the National Institutes of Health. And we're looking at a malarial mosquito known as Anopheles gambi. And one of my graduate students had the opportunity to spend several weeks in Mali studying these mosquitoes and filming them using a customized stereo camera configuration that ultimately allowed us to develop software to track the three-dimensional positions of the mosquitoes in flight. And the particular behavior that we're studying is a swarming behavior in males, which occurs during the twilight hours. And what's accompanying that behavior is the coupling or mating behavior with solitary females. And so we're very interested in how the males form these cohesive swarms, how the females find the swarms, and then what exactly are the flight patterns that the males and females exhibit uh, prior to coupling. So this study is not only going to help us learn about the biological system, which arguably is one of the world's deadliest animals due to its role in malarial transmission, um, but also help us learn new exciting bioinspired tools for engineering design, particularly in the area of autonomous uh, aerial vehicles and how they can um, exhibit group behavior like swarming as well as pursuit behavior. And so we're very excited about using tools from engineering to advance the understanding of these biological systems, both the fish and the mosquitoes, and then in turn taking some of the bioinspired design techniques and returning them into the engineering arena.